Okay, so in this segment, I want to talk about coronavirus. Illegal rave organizers organizers face ten thousand pound fines, and so um, uh, police in England will be able to fine organization organizers of illegal gatherings of more than thirty people, such as raves, up to ten thousand pounds from Friday. Ministers say. So I don't know how they're going to figure out who's actually organized the rave. I think that might be the difficult bit uh, via the power of the internet and anonymity. Um, those who gathered and those who who do not wear face. Uh, coverings where it is mandatory we're given a hundred pound fine doubling up on each offense up to th- three thousand two hundred and so the thing is there you can see a couple of people here not wearing um face file um face masks but the problem is how are the police going to enforce this if you've got like a massive group of people here it's going to be very difficult for the police to do anything about that um especially given that the fact that police numbers um you know aren't the highest so the government has unveiled first plans for um tougher penalties for those breaking coronavirus rules earlier this month um, details of stricter rules come after restrictions to stem the spread of COVID-19 were introduced in Northwest England. Um, overnight, police in Birmingham dis- um, disrupted more than 70 unlicensed social gatherings, uh, including house and street parties. One of which featured a marquee, <laughs> featured marquees and a DJ. Jesus Christ, these are proper street parties, aren't they? In Huddersfield, um, officer, uh, officers broke up an illegal rave uh, involving about 300 people. Two police vehicles were damaged and up to four arrested after officers broke up a uh, party um, breaking lockdown rules in Greater Manchester where restrictions um, between households continue. And so I've seen um, a few different stories about this. I've seen one where um, the police were effectively berated for breaking up a 10-year-old's party. And um, so it's not obviously the best look for the police, but at the same time, they are just enforcing the rules. And I know that's a very slippery slip to go down. But um, in this case, you know, coronavirus can spread very easily, especially if you're in the areas where the lockdown is um, more strict, because the more you keep doing this stuff, the stricter and longer the deadline, um, the lockdown becomes. I don't know how people still haven't figured that out yet. Um, So Home Secretary Priti Patel, the genius, um, says these gatherings are dangerous and those who organise them show a blatant disregard for the safety of others. Um, She added, we will continue to crack down on the small minority who think they are above the law. Probably should look at your cabinet then, mate. Um, The tougher rules have been welcomed by the National Police Chiefs Council, um, NPCC. Um, Alexander Adele Khan um, butchered that. Uh, NPCC lead for unlicensed music events said... Uh, those who organise such gather- gatherings irresponsibly put people's health and safety at risk. He added, to the organisers of this sort of activity, I strongly advise that you seriously consider the risks um, you're creating for everyone in attendance and the wider community. There is a risk of prosecution for those who organise these events and equipment will be seized. That's probably going to be the more um, effective route of uh, seizing equipment because if it's your equipment, then most likely you've played a part in organising it unless it's leased equipment. And so that's probably the easiest way to figure out who's actually organised things. Um, Inspector Andy uh, Andy Berry, uh, chairman of Dovan and Cornwall uh, Police Federation, said um, definitive powers uh, to help those control these large gatherings were helpful. And his colleagues have been seeing an incredible surge in demand. So, and that's just about the increase of powers. Speaking to BBC Breakfast, he said, we are a police force. Uh, we should be there primarily to deal with crime. What we don't want to do is break up children's birthday parties, which is something um, the Manchester Police Force had to do. And I'll talk about that. That's a separate video. Uh, once I find what tab I've left that in. We are seeing an unprecedented um, amount of calls coming in where neighbours are reporting these breaches, snitches. And these... De- these demands are really bringing my colleagues and members are uh, to fatigue and breaking point because there's only so many times they can keep breaking up parties and um, things like that. Otherwise, it's going to be it's going to be pointless. It's going to become like how weed is now, where I think police generally just don't care um, because it's, it happens so often. People just don't care enough. Um, the tougher penalty is also those who flout rules around face coverings. Uh, issued a larger fine, it's like hundred pounds. I will mention that in England, face coverings are mandatory in indoor settings, including public transport, shops, and museums. But the thing is, no one, no one enforces that. Even bus drivers don't wear them, um, with some exceptions for children at, at, or on uh, medical grounds. Um, it comes as a a further eighteen deaths were recorded in the UK on Saturday, bringing the total number of people that have died within 28 days of testing so they changed the methodology so if you've been in say an ICU unit for over 28 days then you're not counted as a coronavirus death for some reason um, as of the 21st of August the UK recorded 21.2 coronavirus cases per 100,000 people over the last fortnight according to the uh, European Centre of Disease Prevention and Control so Mark Walpott a uh, member of the government's um, SAGE um, warned on Saturday that coronavirus would present forever in some form so it's not that relevant his comments um you know the the the, the last bits of the cycle were just filler i don't know why the bbc includes so much filler but you know how so you've got two police officers here right how are they supposed to find look one 
all say that person's wearing a mask there. Two, three, four. I think that guy's wearing a mask. Uh, so five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How, you know, there's at least about 20 people here. How are these two police officers meant to find these people? It's not going to work. The best thing to do is just seize the equipment. And if someone comes for the equipment, then you know either it's leased so you can figure out who the owner is, and that will give you an indication of who set it up, or um, no one comes for the equipment and you've got some free sound stuff so the police can, you know, um, do some parties when this is over. And, yeah, you'd have to, um, you can sell it on eBay or something like that and you can maybe raise some funds for the police force, given that God knows they need it. Um, but, you know, you can see a lot of people here. Well, she doesn't look involved. You can see a lot of people here not wearing masks. So what do you do in this situation? <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, you know, this is bluster. There's more bluster from the government because, you know, people see this. Oh, you're going to get a 10,000 fine if you organise a rave. But, um, you know, I, I want to see how many people have actually been charged with this. How many people have actually been charged with going to raves and things like that. It's just, it's just not... It's just not happening because you can't. You struggle to contain this many people. The only ones who get arrested and um, charged are the ones who um, like attack the police or do stupid shit like that. Like it's just it's just oh, stupid stuff. You have to edit that out. Um, they're, they're the only ones who will get done by police. Like no one else. So look, I'm gonna leave it there. I mean, it's more blast from the government. If if they actually had the police numbers, they could do this stuff. Um, but that's not gonna happen. So I'm gonna leave it there. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.